We all love riding our bikes as fast as possible, and is it a simple case of going out and mashing on the pedals? Or do we need to apply a little bit of thought and pacing? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to ride as fast as possible. And then as a little bonus, I'm also gonna ask the pros about their time trial pacing strategies. Now then, if you want to get from A to B as fast as possible, and that involves riding along a pan flat straight road or riding from the bottom to the top of a climb, then chances are the best and fastest way to do that is to ride the highest power you can possibly sustain for the duration of the event. But if getting from A to B involves some corners, some changes in gradient, or maybe even changes in the wind direction, for example, then riding at that high sustained power isn't going to be the fastest method. To ride as fast as possible over mixed terrain requires investing more of your effort into the slower speed sections of your course or routes, for example, and then when you're traveling at a higher speed on that section of road or course, invest in a little bit less of your efforts. Now, the reason for this is because when you apply more effort and more power when you're traveling at a slower speed, it results in a larger increase in speed, therefore will reduce your overall time far more than if you tried a lot harder when you're traveling very fast. It's a simple principle, but can be tricky to perfect, and it will involve constant changes of your effort and power to try to maintain the highest average speed possible. And it's also, incidentally, the fastest way to ride a time trial. Let me give you an example. So if I was to ride at 200 watts up a, up a climb, for instance, I'd maybe be traveling at around 20 kilometers per hour. But if I then increase my efforts from 200 watts to 300 watts, I'm gonna gain a significant amount of speed, which is great news. Whereas if I was riding at 200 watts on a fast section of road, say a downhill, for example, at 45 kilometers an hour, and then increased my effort to 300 watts, it would result in a far less or smaller increase in my speed. The reason for this is because aerodynamic drag increases exponentially. So the faster the speed I'm traveling at, it's gonna take a significant amount more power to increase my speed than if I was riding at a slower speed. This means that on long, fast descents, you can afford to ride a little bit easier and save some of your effort and energy to invest onto some of those slower sections of course, which is gonna result in you riding significantly faster. So for short rides of maybe an hour, for example, on some of those slower speed sections, you can really invest all of your effort and put maximal effort in. Whereas if you're doing a longer event, for example, you need to be somewhat more measured with your efforts, but the principles remain the same. Next up, we need to apply some thought to our body position and aerodynamic drag. This can be approached in a fairly similar principle to what I've just been talking about. And as such, when you're riding at a slow speed, your body position and aerodynamic drag isn't actually that crucial. However, when you're traveling at much higher speeds, aerodynamics and your body position is incredibly important and will help result in riding much faster. Therefore, on those fast sections, of course, you really do need to focus on trying to hold the most aerodynamic and lower body position as you possibly can. It's a simple principle, but an effective one. On long flat sections of road, it's all about striking a balance between aerodynamic drag, your body position, and also how much effort you invest relative to what section of route or road is coming up next. So if, for example, you've got a long flat section of road and you know it goes into a big steep climb, well then you need to be slightly measured with your effort so you can invest it in the climb. But if you've got a long flat section of road followed by descent, well then you can afford to invest a bit more effort on the flats because you know you're gonna get that bit of recovery on that long descent. So those are some basic but very effective principles which we can apply to our own rides or races. But what do the pros do? So a number of weeks ago, I asked some of the pros at the Women's Tour of Britain to find out how they were gonna approach pacing their 16 kilometer time trial. Do they keep it simple and go all out or do they go full science mode? Let's find out. What is gonna be your pacing strategy for today's time trial? 
I think today you have to go really hard in the beginning and then just make it safe through the technical course. And in the end, yeah, you can just go all out the last two kilometers. Um, so with it being pretty technical, twisty course, um, yeah, like how you ride it is pretty important. So I plan to go off quite hard. Um, it's climbing at the beginning um, and yeah, quite long, quite a lot of long pulls up and then to sort of take it a little bit easier through the like faster technical sections where you can catch your breath back so that then you've got something left for the, the back end when it pulls again. So yeah, pretty mixed. So kind of on, off, on, off. The course is quite up and down. So I guess just as hard as possible up the hills, um, but not too hard that I'd blow up too soon and then um, kind of a bit steadier on the downhill because there's a few downhill corners as well that could get quite dangerous um, but yeah just full gas. So today what is going to be your pacing strategy for the time trial? Uh, I don't have one I'm just like it's just my second time uh, racing a TT on racing it so like just trying to not completely die on the first climb like on the hilly part and keep like I love the corners so maybe try to recuperate a bit in the corners and then try to finish <laughs> the quickest way possible. It's quite a technical course and um, very sporting so I'm gonna really kind of just ride to feel I don't think it's a course that you can have a set power in mind and you've got to kind of break it up ride the hills hard and um, stay aero and be safe on the descents and then that last kilometre or two, just give it all that you've got left and hope for the best. I think I'm just going to go as hard as I can for the first hill and then hold on for the rest of it and then rail a few corners as well. Short and simple, love it. I think the key is to just go as hard as you can on the climbs because you've got a lot of recovery on the on the descents and the, the narrow lanes. So yeah, hopefully I can, I can do that and put it off. <laughs> So there you go, a real mix of approaches, but it's great to hear what the pros have to say about it. And I guess like all aspects of cycling, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. But by keeping the principles I've discussed in the back of your mind, you should be able to ride a kilometre or so faster than what you've previously done before. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up. And why not let me know in the comments section down below what sort of principles you apply to try and ride as fast as possible, or maybe even if the principles I've discussed have revolutionised your riding speed. See you later.